Throughout history, there have been countless examples of powerful and influential women who have fought for their communities and their beliefs. In Africa, these women have often been warrior queens, leading their armies into battle and defending their lands against invaders. In this video, in no particular order, we will be exploring the stories of 14 of the most remarkable African warrior queens who have left their mark on history through their bravery, intelligence, and leadership. Number 14 on our list, we have Queen Izinga Mbadi of Angola. Queen Izinga was a 17th century queen of the Undongo and Matamba kingdoms, which were located in modern day Angola. She is known for her resistance to Portuguese colonization and her effort to defend her kingdom from European powers. Queen Izinga is remembered as a skilled diplomat and military strategist, and she is celebrated as a hero in Angola for her efforts to maintain the independence and sovereignty of her kingdom. At number 13, we have Queen Idia of Benin. Queen Idia was the mother of Esige, the Oba of the Kingdom of Benin in present-day Nigeria. She is known for her role in helping her son gain the throne and for her political and military leadership during his reign. Queen Idia is remembered as a powerful and influential figure in Benin history and she is celebrated for her intelligence, strength and courage. In modern times, she has become a symbol of female empowerment and cultural pride in Nigeria. Hatshepsut was a pharaoh of ancient Egypt who ruled from 1478 to 1458 BC. She is considered one of the most successful pharaohs of ancient Egypt and she is known for her many accomplishments including building projects, expeditions to the land of Punt and establishing trade routes. Hatshepsut is also remembered for her strong and confident leadership style as well as her contributions to the art and literature of ancient Egypt. She was the first woman to hold the title of pharaoh and she is considered a pioneering figure in the history of women in leadership roles. 11. We have Queen Poku of Ashanti. Queen Poku was the leader of the Ashanti people in present-day Ghana during the 18th century. She is remembered as a powerful and influential figure in Ashanti history and she is celebrated for her role in uniting the Ashanti people and leading them in their resistance against European colonization. According to legend, Queen Poku is said to have led her people on a long and difficult journey in search of a new home during which they encountered many challenges and hardships. Despite these challenges, she is said to have remained strong and determined and to have ultimately led her people to a new and prosperous home. Queen Poku is remembered as a symbol of strength, courage and leadership in Ghana. Number 10 on our list, we have Kandake, Empress of Ethiopia. Kandake, meaning great woman, was used as a dynasty name for the queens of Morio, the capital of Kush. Many African female warriors ruled Ethiopia, some ruled with their husbands while others ruled in their own right. Historians claim women mainly ruled Morio, among them was Candice that ruled in 332 BC. Candice was a brave and formidable leader. She set a standard of excellence in the class of African warriors queens. Her bravery was evident in the way she prevented Alexander the Great from entering Kush. Alexander had to retreat to Egypt. At number 9, we have Queen Ya Asantewa of Ashanti. Queen Ya Asantewa was born in 1840. She was the queen mother of Ejisu in Ashanti Empire, now part of modern-day Ghana. Her remarkable contribution was in the war of the Golden Stool against British colonialism. The British sent some of the Ashanti king to Ezai and looted their lands. Furthermore, the British Governor General requested the Golden Stool of the Ashanti people. The Golden Stool was a symbol of the Ashanti kingdom. This provoked Ya Asantewa and she courageously led the war and fought for her land. She was an intellectual politician and a political activist. The African queen died in 1921. However, she remains a figure of bravery in the history of the Ashanti kingdom. To honor her, Ya Asantewa Girls Secondary School was founded in Kumasi to encourage more female leaders in Ghana. Coming up at number 8, we have Queen Mumza of Rwanda. Queen Mumza was married to a Rwanda king, Kigeli IV. She was one of the formidable African warrior queens with exceptional activism. After the demise of her husband, she rebelled against Rwanda colonial powers and moved to Uganda. Also, she was a woman of extraordinary character and spiritual powers. She became the spiritual leader of the Nyabingi court which was centered around Queen Nyabingi, another very influential African queen. 
Some of our followers believe Queen Mumza is the reincarnation of Queen Abimi. However, she is most famous for her political movements and social activism. She waged war against the three colonial powers in the region, the German, the British and the Belgians from the neighboring Congo. She fought fearlessly for human rights, resisting many norms that could limit the rights of women. The Nyabengi court was once centered around resistance and was seen as a religion of the oppressed. Queen Mumza's bravery earned her the name Rutatina Merengo, which means one who never fears bows and arrows. She died in 1945, but her spirit lives on through the Rastafarian movement. Number 7. We have Queen Nandi of Zulu. Queen Nandi was born in 1760 in Mermod, South Africa. She was Shaka Zulu's mother, one of the Zulu kings in South Africa. She was a figure of strength to the kingdom of Zulu. According to historians, she gave birth out of wedlock, which made her suffer a great deal of insult and humiliation at other women's hand. However, she was strong and resilient. She was determined in her heart that her son, Shaka, would be one of the greatest kings. There were times when she could not cater to herself and her son, especially during the 1802 food shortage referred to as Mandla Tule, meaning eat and be quiet. Queen Nandi had to travel a long distance on foot to seek help to provide for her son. Through her determination, Shaka became a great king. Queen Nandi's steadfastness had a positive influence on the kingdom. She inculcated and instilled great values in her son and it was evident in the way Shaka treated his subjects, especially women. Also, she supported her son tirelessly, resulting in many exploits and border extensions during her son's tenure. Although she died in 1827, her work lives on. She may not have been among the fiercest African warrior queens, but she raised a great warrior king. At number 6, we have Queen Rana Valona of Madagascar. Queen Rana Valona ruled Madagascar for 33 years. She was of Merina's descent on the island. Queen Rana Valona was a commoner but adopted into a royal family. Her adoption was a reward for her father's courageous act of exposing the murder plot against the Merina king. Subsequently, she married the king's son, Radama. Queen Rana Valona was the first out of the 12 wives of Radama but had no child for him. She later had a love affair with another man and gave birth to a child named Rakoto. After the demise of her husband, she ascended the throne by killing every potential regent. She was a fierce and brutal leader with a horrible reputation. During her tenure, there was no freedom of worship for Christians. Many of them had to flee. Those that could not were brutally killed. Before her ascension to the throne, the Europeans had access to Madagascar. However, as soon as she succeeded the throne, she reformed the society back to its traditional structure. She was resistant to the European forces and movement. She was cruel towards every opposing subject under her rule. One of her common forms of punishment is tagun, a form of punishment in which offenders were given tangena to eat. Tangena is a poisonous nut that makes one vomit. Despite her tyrannical rule, she kept Madagascar from becoming a miniature England and made Madagascar an independent state. Also, Queen Rana Valona was a patriotic and tactical leader in the history of Madagascar. At number 5, we have Queen Cleopatra of Egypt. Queen Cleopatra was born in early 69 BC and was the daughter of Ptolemy. The African queen was a product of incest, a common practice among the Ptolemaic dynasty members. Queen Cleopatra was not from Egypt but was born in Egypt. Subsequently, she ruled as a lawgiver in Egypt and other territories like Cyprus. She was proactive in religious activities, being the chief religion authority in her realm. She married her adolescent brothers who served as her ceremonial spouses during her tenure. Also, she had love affairs with several men for political reasons. This includes Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Queen Cleopatra and Mark Antony were more than just political lovers. Historians claim both of them shared beautiful moments as love beds. Furthermore, Queen Cleopatra was also involved in her kingdom's administrative affairs, solving economic problems during her time. She was a powerful and possessive leader, always protective of her position. Queen Cleopatra killed her sibling when she found out it was a threat to her position. She died in 30 BC. Today, Queen Cleopatra features in several Egyptian and Roman styles ancient work of art. Number 4. We have Queen Nefertiti of Egypt. Queen Nefertiti was born in 1370. The name Nefertiti means the beautiful woman has come. 
She was the royal wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten, the 18th dynasty king of ancient Egypt. However, she and her husband were famous for championing the religious revolution. Some feel her time in power was one of the relative stability, although much effort was made by successors to erase that legacy. Some scholars believe she died while others think she exiled after the death of her husband. To date, she is known for her painted sandstone bust. Also, she features in many archaeological sites. Number 3. We have Makeda, Queen of Sheba. Queen Makeda of Sheba was the first African queen and a female monarch mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. She was a woman of wealth and power. Her most remarkable impact was defeating the serpent king Ar. The serpent king troubled the northern Ethiopia kingdom of Asium at that time. She was renowned for her intelligence and cleverness, which was backed by her visit to King Solomon's palace in Jerusalem. It is essential to know that historians believe she had a son for King Solomon, whose name was Menelik. Subsequently, Menelik became Ethiopia's first imperial ruler. At number 2, we have Queen Moremi of Ileife. Queen Moremi Ajasoro was born in Ofa, a town in southwest Nigeria. She was famous for her bravery and tactfulness that delivered the people of Ileife from slavery. She was married to Oromio, the son of Odudua. In the 12th century, the people of Ileife were invaded and oppressed by a certain tribe known as people of the forest. To save her people, she pledged to the river called Esimiri to sacrifice anything demanded of her if she could discover her oppressor's secret. Queen Moremi disguised and was taken captive by their oppressors, she eventually got married to the leader of the group due to her beauty and tactfulness. Through the position, she discovered her invader's secret and her people were freed. She returned to her people and to the river spirit to fulfill her pledge. Unfortunately, the spirit demanded for Moremi's only son, Olurogbo. She kept her vow and sacrificed her only son. This sacrifice saddened the entire people of Ileife. To date, the people of Ileife regard themselves as the eternal child of Queen Moremi. They also celebrate the Idi festival in honor of her selfless act. The statue of Moremi, known as the Queen Moremi Statue of Liberty, is the fourth tallest statue in Africa and the tallest in Nigeria. And finally at number one, we have Queen Amina of Zaria. Queen Amina of Zaria is one of the greatest African warrior queens to date. She was the daughter of King Nakatao and Queen Bakwa Turunku. Born in 1533, Queen Amina was a warrior queen of Zao Zao, which is today's Zaria city in Nigeria's Kaduna state. She was exposed to military political affairs by her grandfather. In 1576, she succeeded the throne and Zaria became one of the largest of the seven Hausa state. Within a few months of her ascension to the throne, she embarked on a series of military engagements. She led a big military band fighting battles continually throughout her tenure. According to Kano Chronicles, Amina conquered all towns as far as Kwararafa and Nupi. She was the brain behind the innovation of protective armors among the military in Aousa land. Also, she was fond of taking a lover in every town she went through. These lovers did not live to tell the tale. They were beheaded the very next day after spending the night with the queen. She is credited for constructing the distinctive and fortified ancient city walls known as Danua Amina or Amina Walls in her area. Many of these constructions are still standing to this day. Apart from her conquest, her contribution to trade and commerce in her state was immense. This African queen contributed to the creation of trade routes throughout Northern Africa. Queen Amina died in 1610. However, she remains a prominent figure in the history of Zaria. Let me know in the comment section below your opinion about these brave queens. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Yemi Melikaya for Historica Africa. Until next time, cheers, have a good one.